When Lilacs Last in the Dooryard Bloomed by Walt Whitman Read for LibriVox.org by Winston Tharp When lilacs last in the dooryard bloomed, And the great star early drooped in the western sky in the night, I mourned, and yet shall mourn with ever-returning spring. O oh, ever-returning spring, Trinity sure to me you bring, Lilac blooming perennial, and drooping star in the west, And thought of him I love. O oh, powerful western fallen star, O oh, shades of night, O oh, moody tearful night, O oh, great star disappeared, O oh, the black murk that hides the star, O oh, cruel hands that hold me powerless, O oh, helpless soul of me, O oh, harsh surrounding cloud that will not free my soul. In the dooryard, fronting an old farmhouse, near the whitewashed palings stands the lilac bush, tall growing with heart-shaped leaves of rich green, with many a pointed blossom rising delicate with a perfume strong I love, with every leaf a miracle. And from this bush in the dooryard, with delicate colored blossoms and heart-shaped leaves of rich green, a sprig with its flower I break. In the swamp, in secluded recesses, a shy and hidden bird is warbling a song. Solitary, the thrush, the hermit, withdrawn to himself, avoiding the settlements, sings by himself a song. Song of the bleeding throat. Death's outlet song of life, for well, dear brother, I know, if thou wast not gifted to sing, thou wouldst surely die. Over the breast of the spring, the land, amid cities, amid lanes and through old woods, where lately the violets peeped from the ground, spotting the gray debris, amid the grass in the fields each side of the lanes, passing the endless grass, passing the yellow-speared wheat, every grain from its shroud in the dark brown fields uprising, passing the apple-tree blows of white and pink in the orchards, carrying a corpse to where it shall rest in the grave, night and day journeys a coffin. Coffin that passes through lanes and streets, through day and night, with a great cloud darkening the land, with the pomp of the enlooped flags, with the cities draped in black, with the show of the states themselves, as of crepe-veiled women standing, with processions long and winding, and the flambeaux of the night, with the countless torches lit, with the silent sea of faces and the unbared heads, with the waiting depot, the arriving coffin, and the somber faces, with dirges through the night, with a thousand voices rising strong and solemn, with all the mournful voices of the dirges poured around the coffin, the dim-lit churches and the shuddering organs, where amid these you journey, with a tolling, tolling bell's perpetual clang, here a coffin that slowly passes, I give you my sprig of lilac nor for you for one alone blossoms and branches green to coffins all i bring for fresh is the morning thus would i carol a song for you o sane and sacred death all over bouquets of roses o death i cover you over with roses and early lilies but mostly and now the lilac that blooms the first copious i break I break the sprigs from the bushes. With loaded arms I come, pouring for you, for you, and the coffins all of you, O oh death. O oh western orb sailing the heaven, now I know what you must have meant, as a month since we walked, as we walked up and down in the dark blue so mystic, as we walked in silence the transparent shadowy night as i saw you had something to tell as you bent to me night after night as you drooped from the sky low down as if to my side while the other stars all looked on as we wandered together the solemn night for something i know not what kept me from sleep as the night advanced and i saw on the rim of the west ere you went how full you were of woe as I stood on the rising ground in the breeze, in the cold, transparent night, 
as I watched where you passed and was lost in the netherward black of the night, as my soul in its trouble dissatisfied sank, as where you, sad orb, concluded, dropped in the night and was gone. Sing on there in the swamp, O oh, singer, bashful and tender, I hear your notes, I hear your call. I hear, I come presently, I understand you. But a moment I linger, for the lustrous star has detained me. The star, my departing comrade, holds and detains me. Oh, how shall I warble myself for the dead one there I love? And how shall I deck my song for the large, sweet soul that has gone? And what shall my perfume be for the grave of him I love? Sea winds blown from east and west, blown from the eastern sea and blown from the western sea, until there on the prairies meeting these and with these in the breath of my chant, I perfume the grave of him I love. Oh, what shall I hang on the chamber walls? And what shall the pictures be that I hang on the walls to adorn the burial house of him I love? Pictures of growing spring and farms and homes with the fourth month eve at sundown and the gray smoke lucid and bright, with floods of the yellow gold of the gorgeous indolent sinking sun burning, expanding the air with the fresh sweet herbage underfoot and the pale green leaves of the trees prolific in the distance the flowing glaze the breast of the river with a wind dapple here and there with ranging hills on the banks with many a line against the sky and shadows and the city at hand with dwelling so dense and stacks of chimneys and all the scenes of life and the workshops and the workmen homeward returning Lo, body and soul, this land, mighty Manhattan with spires and the sparkling and hurrying tides and the ships, the varied and ample land, the south and the north and the light, Ohio's shores and flashing Missouri, and ever the far-spreading prairies covered with grass and corn. Lo, the most excellent sun, so calm and haughty, the violet and purple morn with just felt breezes, the gentle soft born measureless light, the miracle spreading bathing all, the fulfilled noon, the coming eve delicious, the welcome night and the stars over my cities shining all, enveloping man and land. Sing on, sing on, you gray brown bird, sing from the swamps, the recesses, pour your chant from the bushes, limitless out of the dust, out of the cedars and pines. Sing on, dearest brother, warble your reedy song, loud human song, with voice of uttermost woe. O liquid and free and tender, O wild and loose to my soul, O wondrous singer, you only I hear, Yet the star holds me, but will soon depart. Yet the lilac with mastering odor holds me. Now while I sit in the day and looked forth, in the close of the day with its light and the fields of spring, and the farmer preparing his crops, in the large unconscious scenery of my land with its lakes and forests, in the heavenly aerial beauty after the perturbed winds and the storms, under the arching heavens of the afternoon, swift passing, and the voices of children and women, the many moving sea tides, and I saw the ships, how they sailed, and the summer approaching with richness, and the fields all busy with labor, and the infinite separate houses, how they all went on, each with its meals and minutia of daily usages, and the streets, how their throbbings throbbed, and the cities pent, lo, then and there, falling upon them all, and among them all, enveloping me with the rest, appeared the cloud, appeared the long black trail, and I knew death, its thought, and the sacred knowledge of death. Then with the knowledge of death as walking one side of me, and the thought of death close walking the other side of me, and I in the middle, as with companions, and as holding the hands of companions, I fled forth to the hiding, receiving night 
that talks not down to the shores of the water the path by the swamp in the dimness to the solemn shadowy cedars and ghostly pines so still and the singer so shy to the rest received me the gray-brown bird i know received us comrades three and he sang what seemed the carol of death and a verse for him i love from deep secluded recesses from the fragrant cedars and the ghostly pines so still came the carol of the bird and the charm of the carol wrapped me as i held as if by their hands my comrades in the night and the voice of my spirit tallied the song of the bird death carol come lovely and soothing death undulate round the world serenely arriving arriving in the day in the night to all to each sooner or later delicate death praised be the fathomless universe for life and joy and for objects and knowledge curious and for love sweet love but praise 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 for the sure and winding arms of cool and folding death. Dark mother, always gliding near with soft feet, have none chanted for thee a chant of fullest welcome? Then I chant it for thee, I glorify thee above all. I bring thee a song that when thou must indeed come, come unfalteringly. Approach! strong deliver us when it is so when thou hast taken them i joyously sing the dead lost in the loving floating ocean of thee laved in the flood of thy bliss o death from me to thee glad serenades dances for thee i propose saluting thee adornments and feastings for thee and in the sights of the open landscape and the high spread sky are fitting and life and the fields and the huge and thoughtful night the night in silence under many a star the ocean shore and the husky whispering wave whose voice i know and the soul turning to the o oh, vast and well veiled death and the body gratefully nestling close to thee over the tree-tops i float thee a song over the rising and sinking waves over the myriad fields and the prairies wide over the dense packed cities all and the teeming wharfs and ways i float this carol with joy with joy to thee o death to the tally of my soul loud and strong kept up the gray-brown bird with pure deliberate notes spreading filling the night loud in the pines and cedars dim clear in the freshness moist and the swamp perfume and i with my comrades there in the night why my sight that was bound in my eyes unclosed as to long panoramas of visions i saw askant the armies and i saw as in noiseless dreams hundreds of battle flags borne through the smoke of the battles and pierced with missiles i saw them and carried hither and yon through the smoke and torn and bloody and at last but a few shreds left on the staffs and all in silence and the staffs all splintered and broken i saw battle corpses myriads of them and the white skeletons of young men i saw them i saw the debris and debris of all the dead soldiers of the war but i saw they were not as was thought they themselves were fully at rest they suffered not the living remained and suffered the mother suffered and the wife and the child and the musing comrade suffered and the armies that remained suffered passing the visions passing the night passing unloosing the hold of my comrades hands passing the song of the hermit bird and the tallying song of my soul Victorious song, death's outlet song, yet varying, ever altering song, as low and wailing, yet clear the notes rising and falling, flooding the night, sadly sinking and fainting, as warning and warning, and yet again bursting with joy, covering the earth and filling the spread of the heaven. 
as that powerful psalm in the night I heard from recesses. Passing, I leave thee, lilac with heart-shaped leaves. I leave thee there in the dooryard, blooming, returning with spring. I cease from my song for thee, from my gaze on thee in the west, fronting the west, communing with thee, O comrade lustrous with silver face in the night. Yet each I keep, and all retrievements out of the night. The song, the wondrous chant of the gray-brown bird, and the tallying chant, the echo aroused in my soul. With a lustrous and drooping star, with a countenance full of woe, with a lilac tall and its blossoms of mastering odor, with the holders holding my hand, nearing the call of the bird, comrades mine, and I in the midst, and their memory ever I keep, for the dead I loved so well, for the sweetest, wisest soul of all my days and lands, and this for his dear sake, lilac and star and bird, twined with the chant of my soul, there in the fragrant pines and the cedars dusk and dim. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.